These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> Today's episode of The Other Stories is Coyotes, written by Thomas Kent West and narrated by Shara Yonke. The hole in the concrete floor was no bigger than a television. Sophia looked to see if her mother was joking, but she could tell from her face that she was not. They stood in a clump of ten people, mostly men, but some women and other children too. The man standing by the hole held a large gun and wore clothes that made him look like a soldier, although Sophia knew he wasn't. He was from the cartel, just like the men who stood behind them, ushering them forward. Coyotes, her mom had called them. I'll go first, the thin coyote said, speaking loud so that those in the back could hear him. Then you'll follow one by one. Once we're inside, you need to follow the person in front of you. Don't take your hand off their back. Don't take a wrong turn, or there's no getting out. You get lost, you're on your own. Understood? There were some weak nods. Most of them looked tired. She guessed if you were leaving home forever, you had to be tired. Mom, I don't want to, she whispered, watching the thin coyote slide through the hole and vanish. Her mom crouched by her side and took her face in her hands. It's six football fields, she said. Then we'll be in America, and we can see Dad, okay? The soldier behind them stepped up and pressed the butt of his gun into her mother's back. You two first, he said, then nodded to the hole in the ground. Her mother smiled a flat smile, then stepped toward the hole, clenching Sophia's hand in hers. Sophia watched as her mother slid into the hole, her wide hips scraping against the rough-hewn concrete. Her mother's face vanished into the dark, a pale moon becoming new again. Then it was her turn. She looked down. In the distance, she could see a flashlight at the bottom of a long drop. Her legs began to tremble, her blood freezing, but somehow she managed to step down, find the next rung of the ladder. Step by step, she descended into the tunnels until the light above her was the size of a cell phone screen. Her mother talked her down the last few steps, then took hold of her and lifted her from the bottom rung, placing her on the floor. See? Just like that. Easy peasy. Now we can just walk. Sophia nodded, but she was still shaking from the climb down. She hated tight spaces and the dark. Now... That was all there was. Her mother pressed a flashlight into her hand. Hold on to this. It will keep you safe. She flicked the beam on. Sophia held it close to her face. She could see her own breath in the frigid air of the tunnel. When the rest of the migrants joined them, the thin coyote started leading them through the tunnels. Sophia held her flashlight tighter. Her other hand clamped to her mother. The tunnel continued to branch off, and more than once she almost made a wrong turn, drawn into the dark like something was calling her. The only sounds were the hot breath of her companions and the scuttle of their feet in the dirt. Hours seemed to pass before their caravan came to an abrupt stop. She slammed into the person in front of her and her mother caught her as she stumbled back. Someone yelled from the back, What's the hold up? Sophia peeked her head around the man in front of her and caught sight of the thin coyote passing his flashlight along a stone wall. Or something like a wall. It was made of rubble. More of a rock slide than a wall. To the right, a gaping hole stood on the right-hand side. The thin coyote flashed his light inside and Sophia could see stalactites hanging like teeth. She called for the other coyotes and they shoved their way past the long line of the caravan. Sophia could hear them talking up ahead, their voices carrying through the tunnels. Some kind of cave, he whispered. Looks like the wall has collapsed. Way's blocked, another coyote said. What do we do? Don't tell them yet, the thin coyote said. I'll go check out the cave. Maybe it opens back up to the tunnel on the other side. The other coyotes nodded, and the thin man disappeared into the cave opening. 
There was the echoing sound of shuffling stones and the man reappeared, out of breath. <sighs> it's massive. Must be miles of cave down there. We'll have to try to... Sophia watched it happen. One moment, the thin coyote was speaking. The next, he was ripped back into the tunnel by an unknown force. Sophia thought she could see the flash of something bone white around his throat, and a spray of arterial blood coated the inside of the wall. The other coyotes flinched, drawing their rifles and pointing it at the cave entrance. They called the thin coyote's name and it echoed in the cavern beyond. One of the coyotes pointed his rifle-mounted flashlight into the cavern, then froze. Holy God, he whispered. Sophia could see the blood drain from the man's face and his mouth twist into a scream. <coughs> he clenched the trigger and held, bullets exploding from his rifle, filling the tunnel with fire and thunder. She clenched her hands over her ears to block out the echoing booms of the gunshots, but was quickly knocked to the floor. The people in front of her were fleeing, bulldozing their way backwards. She felt a searing pain as the man in front of her stepped on her ankle and she cried out, but her scream was lost in the echo of the gun. When she managed to retrieve her flashlight from the dirt, it was only her and the soldiers left, their frantic voices and gunfire and... Something huge and white crashed out of the cave entrance, slamming into the shooting man's body. He splattered against the wall like a ripe fruit, guns still firing as it fell, bullets ricocheting off stone and hitting the people still fleeing the tunnel. The other soldiers scrambled back, trying to get the white shape in their scopes. That's when Sophia saw it. The shape was fundamentally human. Four limbs, a torso, a head. But the skin was chalk white, traced with dark veins as though translucent. Its eyes were black pits in a skull-like face, and its limbs were overlong and thin, tipped with sharp claws. It lifted its head and Sophia could see chunks of the torn flesh and shark-like teeth, dangling red strands of meat. Its claws pinned the dead coyote to the wall, piercing the earth as easily as the man. The remaining coyotes ran. In a moment they were running past her, and then her mother's arms were around her and dragging her back. Before her mother took her away, she watched as the white creature leapt onto the nearest coyote, teeth closing over the man's face. Sophia was crying. She tried to block out the sounds of screaming and bullets and the smell of death filling the tunnel. Her mother held her close to her chest, running blind. She could hear the screams of the coyotes lessen as her mother ran down one tunnel, then another. She tried to block out the sounds of screaming and bullets and the smell of death filling the tunnel. The people in their caravan had scattered into the labyrinth, and after a moment they stood in pitch darkness with only a few other people. What was that thing? asked a man beside them. They sat in blackness huddled against the stone walls. Be quiet, a woman said. It could hear you. The others were silent or shedding gentle tears. How are we going to get out of here? asked her mother. The man that was with them spoke up. I think I remember the way. If we go back out the main hall, I bet I can get us back. There is a cord along the wall, the power cord. I saw the coyotes touching it as we moved. I think it leads us out. Are you willing to bet our lives? Spat her mother. It's all I've got. You have any better ideas? The man's voice said. I'm going to turn on my flashlight and find the cable. Then we can find our way out. There was a deep breath in the silence and then the man's flashlight flickered on. He was an ordinary looking man with a doughy face and sun-brown skin. He wore a simple flannel shirt that was patched at the elbows. Follow me, he said. Don't get separated. 
The others nodded and then formed a line behind him. Moving through the low ceiling tunnel, he stepped forward, back into the main chamber. It's clear, and the cable is... A flash of white filled the beam of the flashlight, and then the man was gone. His scream was cut off by the sound of snapping vertebrae. The flashlight clattered to the floor and was quickly extinguished by a long, white claw. The plastic and metal components shattered across the stone floor, and it was dark again. The only sound was the wet sound of ripping flesh and the pained whimpers of a man. Mama, Sophia whispered. It's the light! He doesn't like the light! Next to her, Sophia heard a woman fumbling with something. She saw the flicker of a flashlight struggling to start. No! Her mother shouted, but it was too late. The flashlight came on, illuminating the pale, blood-soaked creature before them. In a flash, the woman holding the light was dead, impaled on one of the creature's long claws. But the flashlight fell in such a way that it illuminated the group of people standing there. The creature's black, beady eyes landed on them. Run! Her mother whispered. The carnage began again behind them as more people tried to turn on their flashlights, see the thing that was hunting them, only for the pale thing to follow the source of the light. She yelled at them to stop, to turn off their lights. But her mother dragged her into another tunnel and the scene vanished. They sat there, backs against the wall, breathing heavily. Mom, Sophia said, starting to cry again. It's okay. It's okay, baby. We're gonna get out of here, her mother said. She covered Sophia's ears with clamped hands to block out the sounds of screaming elsewhere in the tunnels. They echoed off the walls, making it seem like death was coming from all directions. They kept moving, kept their hands along the wall knowing that it would eventually lead them out. Good girl, her mother said occasionally, but Sophia could hear the tears and shaking terror in her voice. They moved that way for what seemed like hours, following the walls, climbing over corpses and parts of corpses as they had to, a third set of near-silent footsteps following behind them. And eventually, Sophia saw a glint of metal, something in the distance reflecting light. Mom, it's a letter, she said, her voice swelling with joy. Go quickly now, Sophia, go! Her mother said. Sophia scrambled toward the ladder, rising onto two feet and running. Her mother running behind her. She grabbed onto the ladder, barely visible in some ambient light. Above her, a small latch leaked daylight into the tunnels. A way out. She climbed as fast as she could, her mother pushing on her back to help her up, until finally she came, panting and sweating, arms shaking to the latch. Then she paused. But mom, when we open this, it'll be bright. What if that thing... She started. We don't have any other choice. The minute you open that latch, crawl out and I will be right behind you, I promise, okay? <gasps> Sophia nodded and her mother began to count. One. Two. Sophia pushed the latch open and was blinded by the daylight pouring through. She leapt out of the tunnel and onto the red dirt of a desert, the sun warm and sand baking her skin. Behind her, she heard her mother scrambling and she turned to reach her hand out to... Her mother wasn't there. The last thing she saw was her pale face vanishing into the dark, a full moon becoming new again. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Other Stories. Coyotes was written by Thomas Kent West, narrated by Shara Yonke, edited by Carl Hughes of music by Krista Brisky and Tom Robson. 
and sound effects provided by zapsplat.com and freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers, Joshua Boucher and Jasmine Arch, and Joshua Boucher and Carolyn O'Brien for helping with our submission reading. And of course, to Ben Errington for tunneling through the digital soil of social media like the diligent and handsome earthworm he is. Thomas Kent West is an American writer of speculative fiction. He's the winner of Horror Babble's Artifacts of Horror Contest and the Black Hole Entertainment Short Fiction Prize. Thomas has previously published with the other stories as Thomas X Teller. You can read more of his work on Twitter at, at Thomas Kent West. Shara Yanke is a quirky, enigmatic Lalakisiak who lives in beautiful Eugene, Oregon. When she's not fashioning medical products to rescue your squishy brains, she's using her own to plot new story ideas, hone her archery skills, play video games, and occasionally lose herself in paralytic fits of existential dread. She's accompanied by her danger noodle, Silas, who whispers award-winning story ideas in her ears every night and graciously allows her to keep all the credit. You can find her on Instagram at Zalezra and Facebook at Shara Dane Yonke. The Other Stories is a production of the Story Studio Hawk and Cleaver and is brought to you with a Creative Commons attribution, no commercial, no derivatives license. That means don't change it, don't sell it, but by all means share the hell out of it. Until next time. <laughs>